right, everybody. Thank you very much for sticking with us here. Of course, that intermission. A big shout out to uh, Wilhelm, Coban, Lacrity, and ST Hockey as they help bring to you this ECL Elite Division playoffs in first two games in the books. A two to nothing lead now for Granite Gaming over Sawo, the two seed in a little bit of trouble. And we'll see, though, if the uh, the biggest gap, of course, the one seed versus the eight seed, the biggest mismatch on paper, if uh, we happen to see the same kind of uh, the same kind of pressure from the lower seed, although it's going to be even more difficult for the likes of Goons to do that again. H-Reds are defending champions in action here after claiming the regular season crown. Yeah, um, I I think it'd be hard pressed to see H Reds look uncomfortable in any stage uh, in this matchup. I don't think they're going to take anyone lightly. That's just kind of the team that they are. And I mean, again, they were the ones who uh, beat Forlunda last year. Not only that, they won four straight against them. Uh, yes, many of those were one goal games. Besides that crazy game two, where I think they won six to one. But mm -hmm. it's it's that sort of mentality that H Reds ha have that make them such a deadly team and. So they're always kind of foot on the gas. They never really take uh, any uh, periods off here. So Goon's definitely going to have their work cut out for them. Again, a reminder of the regular season standings that we had. We'll be able to get a look at how these uh, how these two teams perform. And, of course, the gap there, Sin, as well. Again, 53 points for Atreids in the regular season compared to the 38 of Goon's. But, of course, for Atreids, the big thing that stands out as we'll uh, transition to the team stats in just a moment from uh, the regular season and, of course, the matchups here. It is that goal-scoring differential for Atreds, the only team to break 100 goals in the season. Havu at 87. You could argue 13 goals away isn't even close to breaking 100. Yeah, it's, you know, H was just kind of in a league of their own. And I think you'll see that in, in the matchup, you know, when, when you look at these two teams stats as well, it's just they are just, I mean, you can see it on screen right there and not necessarily directly at the head to head, but uh, it's a large gap in between these two teams for sure. Indeed, let's get you a look at those head to head team stats here as well. Again, H Reds and Goons going head-to-head -head in this particular matchup. And, of course, we saw the goals for and the goals against, but as well, it's in the likes of the power play percentage and especially that PK percentage. I mean, special teams very much in favor of the defending champs. Yeah, H-Reds didn't do anything bad this season, pretty much. it's And that's kind of what you expect uh, out of a one seed and, you know, the defending champs as well. They just kind of came out ready to go. They adjusted very well to the NHL 22 and... I mean, here they are. They with that one seed, they get you know they get the uh they they get to play against the team that sort of you know just made their way into the playoffs, uh, which is Goons this season. They did good last season, I think, securing that five seed. But this season, a little bit more of a struggle for them to sort of figure some things out. New additions to their lineup as well. But here against Atreds, again, this is the ultimate test right here. You know, can you put up a good fight against a championship team? Well, you mentioned it, and let's take a look at the lineups for these two teams heading into the action here tonight as we kick off this series. Four goons, Pika Roger, Lightning, and Captain Kriketsi on that right-hand side. Viba and Jay Toro on defense. Finn Kona between the pipes, and of course on the flip side for Atreds, the same exact lineup that won the championship last year. No changes to that roster. It is Villapoika, Benito, and Nikki Dangles. Domi and King of Apes on defense and phase between the pipes. And as always, we'll start off with that battle of the center matchup as it is Lightning taking on Benito. And Sin, as good of a, a sophomore season as Lightning had in this elite division, Benito was obviously one of the premier players that we have. Yep. Uh, 64 points in 30 games played. I think uh, definitely uh, stands to reason he is one of the best. You know, not quite the highest uh, of point totals. He's had, you know, some better seasons, I think, in, in the last one as well. He actually led the team in points at times. But, you know, in this case, Villapoik was just too good. But Lightning has that face-off advantage. That hasn't really seemed to bother this H-Reds team too much. But with the way things go, I mean, that could be something that goons want to capitalize on. If they have some nice set plays in mind that they haven't really pulled out or just, you know, some ways to be able to catch, uh, catch H-Reds off guard, Lightning's going to have to be big because we know how good Atres is on the defensive side of the puck. 
the winger battle here kind of uh, exemplifies as to why they're so good on the defensive side of things because for H Reds, of course, looking at the right-hand side of the screen first, though, it is Villapoika and Nikki Dangles. Talk about uh, mentioning Antonio Manon as one of the premier two-way players in this league. Nikki Dangles, of course, very much in that competition, in the running for best defensive forward. But on the flip side, we have last season's Rookie of the Year. And Sin, if I'm not mistaken, two former Rookie of the Years uh, on screen right now. Pika Rajado alongside Kroketsi. And again, very good seasons for the Goons wingers, but it just goes to show how much uh, further ahead H-Reds happen to be in the regular season. Yeah, they're just kind of, you know, in a league of their own, essentially, and that you know, until someone knocks them off that mountain, that's exactly where they're going to stay. You can see kind of the more physical style coming out from goons, especially Kroketsi. He's you know, always had that kind of physical style running around with that in that kind of wrecking ball mentality. A lot of shots put on by both of these guys as well. But yeah, it's just, you know, when you're comparing them to Villa Poika and Nikki Dangles, it, it's a it's a tough comparison for any two pair of wingers. Of course, Villapoika with the league leading 47 goals in 30 games. Absolutely outrageous. The defensive battle here, Viba and Jay Toro for Goons, one of the biggest acquisitions we've seen and uh, in recent memory, really, for someone like Goons to be able to pick up a player of his caliber. But they go up against Domi and King of Apes and obviously send the, the gigantic advantage in terms of points for Atreids, but you see the physicality advantage in favor of Goons, but that could get them into a little bit of penalty trouble. Yeah, you know, it, it, you know, penalties are obviously going to be perhaps, you know, a little bit of an issue, and Atreids, one of the teams that hits the very least. Now, you could argue that has a lot to do, you know, with their puck possession style, but they are actually one of the most penalized teams as well, and surprisingly for Goons with that physical style, had the, I think they were right kind of in the middle of the pack with only, uh, you know, they had the eight least amount of penalties taken. So a bit kind of surprising when you compare the style of both of these teams. But when it comes to the defense, Viva, Jay Toro, kind of both similar players. Obviously, Jay Toro adjusting to playing on that right-hand side. And Domi, King of Apes, have just been solid for so, so long, both above that point per game mark. And again, it's going to be extremely tough for Goons to be able to gain that blue line. The last head to head, of course, it is the goaltending duel that we have here. Finn Kona against FaZe. And talk about someone else who's walked away with some hardware in the past couple of seasons. And it is FaZe. Those numbers still fantastic. Maybe uh, not even quite as high as we expected him to be based off of the reputation he's earned. But on the flip side, Finn Kona, known as a very, very reliable starter as well, to say the least. And I think his numbers support that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Came in, you know, ranked seven in save percentage, six goals against, and fifth for shutouts. On the flip side, FaZe was second in any, in everything. Only second to Nike on uh, Sawo here. And kind of to be expected, as he said, for the top team to have one of the top goaltenders in. Well, there he is. Absolutely. So with that, everybody, that is the lineup here for the first two games of this particular series. Again, the battle of 1v8 are defending champions beginning their retention campaign. At least they are very much hoping for it to be that. Uh, we'll get you a look at the full brackets here as well in case uh, we, we do have time, and I do believe uh, that we do in terms of the brackets. But there you go, Sin. Of course, earlier on, it's not uh, quite inputted yet, but we do know Granite has the 2 to nothing lead on Sawo uh, at this stage. Again, we'll cover the first two games of H-Reds versus Goons. And a friendly reminder as well, the schedule tomorrow. We will have King Lime and B Major on the call as El Clasico begins. Again, who would have thought this would be a first-round matchup? It is for Lunda taking on Havu and IQ against Feriestad. Winner claims the color green uh, <laughs> in perpetuity. Yeah, absolutely and uh well you know Habu might have something to say about that they're probably wishing they can get in a bit on a bit of that action as well but i i can't wait for that Habu for linda matchup it's always been great to see it's unfortunate that one of them is not going to make it by the first round but that just goes to show how much the ecl has changed and we're always going to bring this up if you you know just a couple seasons ago people were like it's always going to be Habu and it's always going to be for linda in the finals until one of those teams breaks up or explodes and it didn't quite take either that. It took a little team called H-Reds, and, well, they've jumped on the scene, and they're looking extremely good. We'll see how they look on this uh, on their path, as you mentioned, to defending that title. You see what the teams are playing for here as well. Of course, this being our winter season, 
Spring season coming up not all that long from now as well, all leading to our grand final this year. So again, a lot to play for. Of course, the quarterfinal round, it's our final eight teams. You win one playoff matchup, you're guaranteed at least a little bit of prize money there as well. So a lot to play for through the opening stages here. But again, a very tall task now for Goons at this stage. Sin, for them, I'm very intrigued to see the play style because again, I don't know how many people are backing you in this particular series. You really, I mean, you want to say they got nothing to lose. At the end of the day, they have a playoff series to lose. And they have mm -hmm. some prize money to miss out on. But at the end of the day, just do your best. See what can happen. At the, I mean, what what is there to lose? At the end of the day, no one might, uh, very few people, I won't say nobody, uh, would be expecting them to win. But they have an opportunity here. Crazier things have happened in the playoffs is what I think I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. And Atreds are going to have to be careful of that possibility. You know, Goons is a team we've seen kind of, you know, be able to, to, to really turn some heads. They did that in their first season in the ECL, making the playoffs right out of the gate. And you can see there, they're trying to maybe uh, see if they could sneak Piku Roger by the defense. He's able to do so there. Backskate pass in front doesn't go. Of course, it is Atreds in their home red uniforms. Goons in the white and early offside call there against Atreds. We'll have to kind of see what kind of uh, pace that we're going to see in this first period, whether neutral zone batter is there or the uh, blue line will be, you know, a bit easier to gain for one team or another. That was nice of Goons, the way they were able to break in the first time, but got to think it's going to be a bit more difficult as this game wears on and Hreds get used to what they're trying to do. So a puck off to the half wall here. Good step up there by Domi to keep it alive. Follow up pass intercepted. Lightning able to get that one over to Kroketsi. He has nowhere to go. In a uh, interesting moment there, no trip, regardless of what just happened. Very <laughs> interesting. They lose puck. Picked up here by Piku Roger. Great poke check there by King of Apes to take that one away. Yeah, just a nice little poke there as it looked like Piku Roger was trying to make a move to the inside. Well timed and well executed by King of Apes, who's you know always been very strong on, uh, uh, as an offensive defenseman, but just so good defensively now as well. Another loose puck here is corralled and sent down the other way. But again, a little bit of inaccuracy on the passes for both of these two teams so far. Big hit there, taking down King of Apes. And down goes Benito as well once the whistle had already gone. Seeing some follow-up hits as well after the play. And just a little bit more on King of Apes. I remember a couple seasons ago, King of Apes was a flex player for Atreds, and we saw him play a couple games here and there, and he was always that kind of guy looking to make a difference, made the opening lineup, and then, well, the rest, as they say, is history. Led all defensemen in points, I believe, in that first mm -hmm. full year, not the yep. season after. Like, it's an incredible rise for him throughout the elite division. It is Atreds in on the attack, pass across. Nicky Dangles just couldn't get a hold of that one. And for Goons right now, very intrigued to see how this starts off as well because we did just see, you know, again, a higher seeded team start off a little bit slow. Anything can happen once we're in the playoffs. Bouncing puck there finds its way to Pico Roger. He goes for the big stretch pass. Space for Kroketsi. Shot on. Stopped by FaZe and Sin. That's the big issue. You get a chance against Atreds. Oh, cool. You still have to find a way to beat FaZe on the opportunity. Yeah, it was a great save coming out of phase. But that saucer pass from Piku Roger just near perfect. They gotta be careful here now. And he dangles again, trying that pass across, broken up. Numerous force passes into the slot, all ready for Atreds goons all over it. And intrigued to see what they got going on here. Maybe calling the flying V. For Katsy. Maybe send that one down low. Penalty is called and well, Sam, regardless of the strategy, it works out. It will be a power play interference call coming up here against Domi. Yeah, Domi is uh, going to be sitting in the box right here. And that's, a, again, something that we mentioned in the pregame. Uh, Atreds take quite a lot of penalties. One of the more penalized teams uh, in the elite division here. And if Goons can get that power play going, it wasn't good throughout the course of the season. But perhaps they've made some adjustments here. Chance for Pika Roger, just couldn't get a handle on it. Pass front, lighted and shot off a stick and out of play. That was a really good shot. A huge block coming out. That corner of the net on that blocker side did have some open space right there. If the aim was true, that could have easily been one, one nothing for Goons. Go off the draw. Goons in control. 
D to D here, good movement, but will they pull the trigger on the shot? Kriketsi, in front they score! Absolutely fantastic work on the power play. Piku Roger buries it, and it's a one to nothing lead in favor of Goons. Throw percentages out the window once you get into the playoffs. It's a clean slate for Goons, and they open up their power play uh, account of scoring and get a huge, huge opening goal in this game. One, one, nothing coming on the power play. Piku Roger buries it. Now it's going to be on Hreds to get the response. And just fantastic work there, but here are Hreds right back in on the attack. Boykin not able to hold that one. Does win it back. Chance shots stopped by Fincona with the gloves. So a good save there. So that, that puck movement from Goons was outstanding. It's like almost luring the uh, defense into a false sense of security. It absolutely was. I thought for a couple times they were going to take the one time and then all of a sudden worked it down low, back up high, and a shot and a goal. Stretch pass there. Great glove down by Domi. Villapoika on side there. Good movement here, though, from Hreds in response. Goons able to survive the threat for now. Here's Leighton. Bit of speed. Kriketsi. He's able to get that one into the zone. Under three minutes to go here in the first period. Again, game one. Well, game two uh, coming up for you here in this very broadcast. An offside call against H Reds. And I won't say it's been a slow start for them, but certainly a better start for Goons. Definitely. I mean, you can't uh, can't hate the one goal lead. And Goons, I'm sure at this stage, will absolutely take it. But H Reds going to, you know, find that at response eventually, you, you think. But so far, so good for Goons. Turnover there, but again, surviving the threat. Hreds really starting to put the pressure on. Nikki Dangles wanted that wraparound. Villapoika tried to go for Benito in front. Final minute. Kept in. Here's Domi. Broken up by Kriketsi. Great poke check from the Goons' captain. Final 10 seconds now. Villapoika still has it. Nikki Dangles bumped off the puck. Back now for Domi. One second to go, and they ran out of time. That'll do it for the first period. A one to nothing lead for Goons off of the power play goal from Pika Roger. And what a goal it was right here. You talked about just the insane puck movement. What a pass. I mean, through about three red jerseys right there, as well as one of their own, finds its way to Piku Roger, who rifled it home. I initially thought it might have gone to Lightning in the lower slot there, but it did indeed go to Piku Roger, who was able to uh, put it in the back of the net. And that's why Goons have that 1 0 lead at the period. But I mean, more in depth again. That's just capitalizing on your chance. You see, Atra's there only have the one registered shot with almost two minutes' time in attack. Now, that's some credit to Goons for getting in the lanes. Um, but also, Atra's, you know, they're very much th that type of team who loves to look for their for their chances. And, I mean, that being said, we've seen games where they've done that and still mounted a lot of shots. That play style definitely seems to work for them. But I'm curious to see if they will make some kind of adjustment here as Goons has been able to shut that down here. Um, in the first period if they do make an adjustment here in the second or perhaps if they're gonna try to stick to their game a little bit longer knowing that if they do crank up the aggression a little bit uh, one period may be enough to sort of bring it back against goons second period underway here in elite division action here with the ECL sports gamer sportsgamer.gg all the information that you need here to follow along get caught up Here's Lighten in now for Goons with a bit of space. Has that one knocked loose? Still on the puck through the double team pressure. Helped out momentarily by Kriketsi. Just couldn't hold on to that one. Down the other way, Benito. Hands off for King of Apes. He gets absolutely floored by Piku Roger. Pass off the mark. Again, Piku Roger, the goal scorer in this game, wearing the team's golden helmet for the team's leading score in the regular season. And of course, last year's Rookie of the Year. Well, how's that to uh, bounce back from a, you know, a Rookie of the Year campaign, lead your team in scoring the next season? I think he might just be legit. That one goes back to the neutral zone. And right now, Goon's in a wonderful spot. So then you got to wonder where that balance is between, you know, defense first and really wanting to put that pressure on to get some insurance here. Yeah, I don't think you can only defend against a team like Atreds. That just opens up way too much. I like what Goons is doing. Just try to, you know, keep doing what they're doing. They're looking for con controlled break-ins when they can't get him dump and chase, and it worked right there. Down the other way, though. Here goes Nikki Dangles. Villapoika just wide of the post. Haven't said that too often. Benito denied. King of Apes now for Domi. Back again. Save. Rebound. Still alive. Fincona's there to keep that one out. Great stops. 
by Finn Kona. I want to almost say with the way one of those last ones bounced that it went off the post or the crossbar and stayed out. It's tough to say is we're missing a bit of the audio here, but that was... Ah, yeah, here come Atreds. And another save. Sin, it is worth noting the regular season matchups uh, between these two teams took place back on January 27th. 2-1 overtime win for Goons and a 3-0 victory for Atreds in that second meeting. So... They have had some pretty close matchups in the past, this season included. This one no different so far as Villapoika is denied by Finn Kona. Much better job of generating offense here from Atreds. Still nothing to show for. Domi hands that one off for Villapoika. Atreds forced to slow things down a little bit. We are already halfway through this second period. Domi can do. Nikki Dangles pass to Villapoika was broken up. Domi. Keeps it alive only momentarily. I mean, great work again by Goons. It's great stick checking. Good job clogging up the lanes. Nicky Dangles, though. Benito, I mean, again, you can see Atreds starting to take more of those chances on the forecheck. Rikatsi, bouncing puck. Domi finds Villapoika. Tries to work his way around Jay Toro. Jay Toro, an extremely uh, seasoned veteran at this stage. First former member of the now for Lunda, as well as Havu has that championship experience, as does Domi. Fires one from the point, and he ties this one up at one apiece. Send what a rocket of a shot. Huge, huge shot coming out from Domi right there. Something that we uh, have begun to expect from Ian King of Apes back there. They both have absolute rockets from the point, and you can almost feel that coming. Atred starting to gain that possession, get their passes a bit cleaner, working that perimeter as they do, and taking what's given to them. And that was the point one timer coming out from Domi, who ties this game up. And it's a tough one for Goons. They're going to have to try to respond here, but they look up to the task. Okay, Toro was pinching in. Domi had six goals in the regular season. Not a surprise to see him on the board. Pika Roger, what a great attempt to get that puck back in front. Absolutely decked for his troubles, though. Here's Benito. Captain drops back for Domi, and again now Benito takes another huge hit. Physical, physical play from both of these two teams. Lighten in for Pika Roger. Lose puck, stopped by Faze. For Ketsy. Not able to hold on to that one. Pico Roger now back for Kriketsi. See what Benito can do now. Two and a half minutes to play here in the second period. Jay Toro, and again, that loose puck. Anytime someone gets the puck on either side, you have someone right up in your face looking to knock you right off of it. The offside call there. Send 137 to go. It's going to be really intriguing to see what Goons does now over this last little bit heading into the third. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, getting out of the period is one thing, but for Goons, I mean, they definitely want some kind of response here, but Atred's really starting to sort of take over. I've liked what Goons have had, you know, tried to show. It's just, you know, a couple things just are, they're a little bit, not, I wouldn't say a little bit off. It's just, you know, they're being defended by Atred's or the, those shots are being turned aside by FaZe. I mean, there's just not a lot of space out there four goons and I think they're you know expect to see that more and more as this series goes on as well Atreds can be absolutely suffocating on the defensive side of things and off the draw it is Nikki Dangles getting it over to Villapoika final seven seconds Nikki Dangles tried that short side didn't go chance for King of Apes blocked loose puck still in a dangerous area but time expires 1-1 the end of 40 minutes. We've got to look at some of the physical play from Jay Toro. Yeah, that's, again, something that Goons has brought a lot to the table right there, and uh, it's that physical play. We mentioned it in the pregame there. One of the more physical teams here. Second most hits in the ECL Elite, and we definitely saw it coming uh, to roost there a little bit, but, you know, they were also being a bit cautious with it as well. I don't think they overhit by any means. I mean, they registered nine just to their, you know, opponent's uh, four. Uh, so far in in this uh, game, but definitely not kind of overdoing it because if you put yourself out of position with a hit, I mean, Atreds don't need a lot of space at, at you know at the worst of times, and if you give them a, a prime uh, a prime situation with a bit more space out there, they can absolutely make you pay. So good on Goons again, balancing their physicality with uh, 
you know, smart defensive gap control, etc. so forth. So again, still a good, good game by goons here, but they're really going to have to look for at least one or two goals here in this third period because yeah, H reds is going to come out strong. Indeed, third period underway here. Waiting for the next little twist to this game. Both goaltenders having to make some saves. Nice having to deal with the puck being held in dangerous areas. Next goal. Very, very important for both of these two teams. Here is Villapoika. And handled well by Jay Toro. He has a real tough task, as does Viva, to try and shut down those two. Here's Kroketsin. Nowhere to go. King of Apes stepping up into the play. Nikki Dangles has it. Drops back for Domi. The goal scorer so far for H Reds. Benino, dangerous pass there. Pico Roger not able to hold on to it. And H Reds will reset. Back into the attacking zone for the Poika. For Domi at the point. Tried to go back down to Villapoika. Nikki Dangles short side. Couldn't bring it home. Benito back for King of Apes. Domi shot blocked. Pico Roger and Viva both having trouble there with Benito. Goons able to survive the pressure, but again, the outlet pass off the mark. H Reds really starting to take control of this game. Benito shot, rebound. Nikki Dangles couldn't get a clean piece of it, and Finn Kona will cover. Yeah, I think about every single forward of H Reds had a whack at it right there. Villapoika with the last one that Finn Kona eventually did cover, but you said it. Ice is starting to tilt in favor of H Reds, and because goons are sort of getting hemmed in so they have to stretch those breakout passes a lot which just feeds Domi. Big save there on a shot from Villa Poica. Benito though still has it. Here's Domi. King of Apes back to Domi wide to that blocker side. Domi again has options. Goes down low for Benito. Domi one more time. Holds it. Looking. Pass to Benito. Broken up but he still has it. Now gets it down low to the captain. Holding it in the corner, waiting it out. And a penalty called there, though. A bit too much pressure. A trip is called. Nikki dangles to the box. And we'll get to see that Goons power play go to work. And they capitalized on that first attempt. Yeah, this is absolutely huge for Goons. Uh, yeah, another another major chance for them uh, to, to make H-Reds pay. They were getting hemmed into their own zone. Not only this is this a reprieve, but... What an opportunity for them to swing the momentum back in their favor. Good face-off win from Benito. They do get that initial clear here. But if the Goons are able to uh, uh, gain this zone, I really like the way they're moving that puck around on the previous power play. They're almost halfway and will be now after that errant pass through this second power play attempt. Now halfway through the third period as well. Not much going for Goons here. They do still have some time. A bit of space there for Lightning. Had a good chance there on the short side. Puck bouncing around. Villapoika is able to clear. So that one decent look for Lightning there at the end, not able to hold on to it, will pretty much do it. They have a chance to at least gain the offensive zone. But there we go. We are back to five on five as Nikki Dangles makes the pass. Fresh out of the box. You know, it's more the uh, H-Reds penalty kill that we're used to. Just absolutely stifling. Sometimes it seems they don't even have a man down at all. Is Benito here. Goes to the point. King of Apes Domi back again. That shot down low. Still in the traffic. Nikki Dangles denied. Fincona still having trouble finding it. Nikki Dangles tried that slap shot from behind the goal line. Here's Domi. He's looking at his options. Held it for a little bit too long. Good play oh, there by Kriketsi. Knock it out of the zone. Another call. This time H Reds going to the power play. Charging is the offense against Jay Toro. A little bit tough to argue. Yeah, definitely uh, quite a few steps leading up to that. Perhaps a bit on uh, the border uh, still at this stage of the game, but the refs don't discriminate based on time on the clock. So major opportunity here for H Reds now to make Goons pay for their mistake. Goons can't clear it. D to D work. Domi Benito shot. Rebound scores. Nikki dangles right place at the right time. The defending champs lead for the first time in this game. It's two to one. That's exactly what they needed to do on that power play right there. A shot on net, you know, just kind of worked it around a bit and then threw it towards the net with bodies in front. Nikki Dangles cleaning up the trash right in front. Puts that one by Finn Kona. They take the lead at two one here. And 
this is the tough situation now for goons. You never want to be trailing against a team like Atria as they make it so hard to get back into it. And the second you stretch your game out, that's when they'll hurt you on the offensive side as well. We heard that, uh, or, we, you know, we, we had said and kind of speculated as to whether or not, you know, and it's an interesting moment there. It will be a goons power play. <laughs> I think that's our first ever playoff spin rooney from the five-time WCW champion. Uh, Sin, a great moment here. Uh, again, it's Villa Poika to the box. Goons, we said they were going to need that insurance goal. Well, now it's going to stand as a tying goal. A uh, power play to go with four minutes remaining here in regulation. And they score instantly. <laughs> it's Krakatsi, the captain. What a feed from the point. We're tied at two. What is going on? A quick turn of events is what's going on. A power play on the side of Atreds. Now Goons respond with one of their own, wasting no time. Last time we saw them work the perimeter, wait for their chance. Not this time. Kicked it out back up top. He kicked it right back to Kriketsi, who rifles that one home on the short side. Beats FaZe. And we have a tie game here. Out of absolutely nowhere there are some moments in where i can openly admit to being caught off guard it's just out of nowhere the penalty and what a power play goal off of a great feed and a very quick shot from kerketsi the captain of goons ties this at two apiece right when you think well two one eight reds this one's over not quite jay toro trying to hold on to that one down low wins it back from benito sends it all the way down they have a chance shot saved by phase Still chipping away at it though. It is Piku Roger. Has it again down low in the corner. Tried to go back down low for Kerketsi. Final minute of play here in the third period. It was one to nothing goons, then two to one Atreds. We're tied now at two. It was nearly three to two goons after that last opportunity for Kerketsi. Goons really gotta be giving Atreds a scare with these uh, close opportunities, especially coming off that slap pass. Nicky Dangles has it down low. Looking at his options. Benito couldn't get that shot off clean. Wins it back. Good bump there by V, but to take it away. Lighten it for Piku Roger. Bit of space here. Can't make the move in front. 20 seconds to go in a regulation. Domi, stretch pass, intercepted by Piku Roger. Knocked loose, though, by King of Apes. Here's Nicky Dangles. 10 seconds to play in regulation. King of Apes joining the rush. Around the back of the net, finds Benito. Benito looking to the point, blocked away by his own man. Overtime coming up in game number one. We call it Marathon Mondays for a reason. I mean, just kind of felt like it had to go to this stage as well with the way these two teams were playing a back and forth, back and forth affair. And I mean, here we are going to overtime and Goons, I mean, so, so close from getting that pivotal go-ahead goal. I mean, what a turn that would have been. And Atred's got to feel, you know, perhaps a bit on their on their heels after that. Maybe, you know, I don't think they're taking this team uh, for granted by any means, but Goons are definitely showing a side to them that they really seem to be able to pull out whenever they face one of these top teams like this. So it will be. Overtime coming up here in incredible turn of events as again H Reds taking that two to one lead late. You think, okay, probably done. Maybe just maybe defending champions should be good to go. Not quite. Not quite to say the least. So we will see what happens here in this overtime. Again, the previous previous uh, series of course we had a, a double overtime game to kick off this broadcast and we will see how this one plays out but again goons scoring that late goal they are the eighth seed they were a higher seed previously in the playoffs as a chance there goes to the waist uh, to the wayside there is Domi able to find it now over to king of apes Let's see what they can do now going down the other way. And the answer is nothing as Atreds will recover possession. An offside call there. Again, nearly three minutes gone in this overtime. Just an incredible turn of events. Again, Goons able to get that quick tying goal. You see the physicality there as well. Uh, four Goons, 16 hits to four. We knew they brought that physical play. Gets him into penalty trouble sometimes. We have seen 
a successful power play goal for H Reds. Again, the one that we thought would be the winner. Off of a, a J Toro charging call. Here is Lighton now for Pete Roger, but for Ketsy, the captain, with the uncharacteristic mistake, not able to hold the line. So we will have a another face off here. 14 shots to seven in favor of Atros. Of course, Lighton and entered play today as the centerman for Goons with a big regular season advantage in face off percentage. And now for Goons, slowing it down, trying to find that bit of space. That dump over to the half wall handled extremely well by Villapoika. Again, the league's leading scorer in the regular season with an astonishing 47 goals. But again, here's now Atreds not able to time it at the line. Could yeah, just be a, a sign of them looking for, uh, you know, some different plays to try and catch Goons a little bit worse for wear. I was just going to say a bit of a slower pace uh, so far here, but we know we've seen that before, and then uh, plays can just come out of nowhere as Piku Roger tried to feed a saucer pass into the middle there, looking for uh, one of the forwards streaking towards the net. Piku Roger does gain the zone. Spin move to try and hold it. King of Apes, though, all over him. Good movement here. Benito looking between the legs. Back for Domi. King of Ape shot. Big save by Fincona. Kept alive. Domi again at the point. Tried to go back down for Benito. Didn't want to be too predictable with the DDD one-timer. But sometimes predictable isn't bad. Like feeding the puck to Villapoika. He strikes. And H-Reds win it 3-2 to two in overtime. The number one seed survive a scare here in game one. Yeah, and that's a bit unfortunate for Goons right there, but that's what you expect from the defending champions, making their most of their opportunity. And who else but Villapoika, the league's leading score right there. Quick pass across, shoots that one home on the glove side. Fincona, unfortunately, can't get back across for it. And fortunately for H-Reds, they get that first game victory and will start off the series the way they want, 1-0. A fantastic result there for H Reds. I mean, a, a bit of a heartbreaker there for Goons, but again, they just could not find that insurance goal uh, when it comes down uh, when it comes down to it. I mean, they had time; they were able to get that tying goal. But end of the day, huge result. You see why they are defending champions. The ability is to come back and get the win, three to two. The final score is Sim. We will get a look here at some of the stats from that uh, first particular yep. matchup there. And look at that. How often do you see Faye is with a 7-10 save percentage, uh, but still walking away with the win? Yeah, not uh, not too often there. But, you know, obviously credit where credit's due. Goons did a good job of trying to kind of get into them uh, when they could. And that's what they're going to have to do throughout the course of this series. They have to capitalize on their chances. You know, we mentioned going in. Uh, how many penalties uh, that H-Reds uh, take? They, you know, take quite a few. And... On the flip side, Goons had one of, I think they were tied for the worst power play. And in this game, would they get two power play goals out of three chances? It's all about just throw percentages out the window after the regular season. It's a whole new ball game. Figure some things out. Capitalize on your chances. They did exactly that twice against the league's best penalty kills. So that's huge for Goons. They got to take that positive away from this game here. And you know if they can figure out a way to sort of Get some chances. <laughs> We're seeing them uh, point out lightning right there in that situation. Um, you know, I I, I I I do still like their chances. Obviously, Atreds, the heavy, heavy favorite, but Goons can really, you know, give them a run for their money here if they keep playing like the way they did in this one. Absolutely. So, again, you get a look here at some of the moments, of course, that, that led to the end of that, uh, to the end of that game, a 3-2 scoreline in favor of H Reds and this was the I do believe the power play goal there from Nikki Dangles off of the rebound. And then of course we see that so often for the top players in this league, just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talked about, um, you know, on Ferlunda Eki and his net front presence, the deflections, the rebounds. That was Nikki Dangles right there, knowing what was going to kind of happen. It was the perimeter play uh, from Atreds to work it around. Then they got the low shot on. He was there to clean things up. This was that shot from Domi, which was just an absolute blast there. You can actually actively see the Goons guys trying to get in front of that shooting lane, just unfortunately unable to get there in the end. And that was one of the goals that kind of uh, set them apart here is that was that power play goal 
four goons there where they kind of just snuck that pass through after working it around on the perimeter there and sneaking it through is definitely an apt wow. uh, descriptor for it. That's four Atreds players who couldn't quite break that play up and Piku Roger buried it. One of those goals where uh, you just got to kind of sit back and uh, admire it for what mm -hmm. it is. Again, you get a look there at all the numbers and, of course, the highlights. 3-2, to two, the final score. Atred surviving that scare, taking game one of this best of seven. We'll set the stage for game two and, of course, the final game of this broadcast. Coming up in just a few moments, let's get you a quick word from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. Minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. All right, again, a big shout out to Wilhelm Kobo, Lakritsi, and SD Hockey, of course, as we uh, have been with them all season long. And again, we thank them. Sin, a, a good result, of course, for H Reds, one to nothing, uh, the uh, final score in the first game of this series. But as we have seen, and as you'd expect from a team of, of Goons caliber, you know, you kind of mentioned it in the pregame, they underwent some lineup changes, but still, this was a team that was expected to be in the playoffs, maybe not as low of a seed as they currently are, but they can at the very least give H-Reds trouble, and of course, at their best, they can win games. I mean, again, uh, surprise, surprise, this is the third game of this, uh, you know, of this uh, season, our winter season that these two teams have played. Uh, two out of the three games have gone to overtime. So, yeah. I mean, again, there was the 3 nothing win for Atreds, and we'll see what happens here in the second matchup. But uh, Goons are going to be a tough team to put away, uh, regardless of how long this series goes, if Atreds were to move on. Yeah, they're one of those teams that just always kind of hangs around. And again, one of those teams that we see every so often that just, like, has that extra level whenever they play these tougher matchups, these top teams. They just seem to find that kind of extra gear. That's a good sign for their future. If they can kind of, you know, clean some of the other things up about their game, become more consistent in getting wins, finding that extra gear, you know, will be against all the teams, essentially. And they'd be able to have, you know, those deeper runs and eventually find the consistency to always play at that high level to be able to compete with a team like Atrez or a team like Ferlunda or Havu. It's... You know, they, they still have a long way to go. Piku, Roger, and Viva are both, I believe, still in their teens. Uh, I know for a fact Viva is because I think a couple seasons ago we were marveling at the fact that he was only 13 years old. I mean, yeah. you have to realize this Goons team is really only going to get better from here on out. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking back at Goons' uh, matchup last season as well, where they lost to Feriostad in round one. I mean, there were quite a few close games there. Three of the six games... Uh, finished with a 2-1 overtime scoreline. <laughs> so again, they are a very tough team to put away, as I think yeah. H-Reds will find out. There's still a long way to go. Again, it's only a one to nothing series lead at this stage uh, after, you know, after the conclusion of that first game. And of course, game two is coming up in just a, a few moments here as uh, the two teams are currently searching. And there you go. And I mean, Sin, of course, as you always expect, you know, one of those things for the most part we don't get uh we don't get too much to talk about in regards to player builds it's the meta builds pretty much across the board the puck moving or play the puck moving defenseman or playmaker elite edges it's pretty much what you're going to see out of this matchup yeah you'll see a couple different things you know for those secondaries but oftentimes a lot of the same stuff uh uh the close quarters magnetic you know etc so forth the uh the puck battle one, which I can never remember the name for. The bear claw. I call it the bear claw. So there it oh, is. Oh, no contest. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> Joys of uh, being uh, somewhat noted for roster, I think. You kind of got to know what the new abilities are uh, in the game. Friendly reminder, of course, tomorrow on the call, rather than our normal Pro Division coverage, we will be covering the other First round matchups, El Clasico, Havu, and Frolunda. IQ also take on Feriostat. Again, King Lime and B-Major on the calls 
for those ones. Again, like I mentioned, as much as Sin and I wish we could call every single game, uh, certainly not possible uh, mm. based off of, again, the uh, the format of the season this year and the faster pace, although it is great, of course, to already be in our playoff format. So Sin, very much looking forward to those. I think on yeah. Wednesday we might be able, of course, to be able to follow along to see what's going to happen there because Wednesday a very uh, big day as well because every single series will have games going on at that point so wednesday is going to be pure madness yeah kind of like uh, how that last week of the season was where we're just desperately hitting refresh and trying to see if uh, the new games and the new results are coming in because this is that again wednesday's the time where those series are really starting to kind of come to a head we'll see which team which has the advantage some of them may even you know have a chance to be over with as well so yeah, it's uh, going to be extremely interesting, but what's also interesting is this uh, game two here between Goons and Atrets. Indeed, it is Goons in their home black uniforms. Atrets in their road. Uh, we're going to go with off-white, almost I Reebok era yeah. kind of cream colors, of course. And, yep, Sen and I both uh, both big fans of that as, a, you know, as opposed to uh, other version of road jerseys. So a good look for Atrets this year as they... Uh, Changed up those road unis. It is Goons, though, here in on the attack. Here's Kerketsi. Slap shot just wide of the far side. There was space. Nearly caught Faze off guard. Not going to catch him off guard with that wraparound, though. Great stop. And the other way here is Villapoika, the overtime hero. Again, league leading scorer with 47 goals. There have not been too many players to approach the 50 mark, such as he did this season. Pika Roger. Can't hold on to that one. Benito will look to slow it down. See what King of Apes can do here. He is very involved in the offensive side of things. That first game, space behind the defense. Good hit there. Didn't allow Kriketsi to take advantage. King of Apes trying to just bull rush his way. On that far side, Lighten. Stretch pass again off the mark. Domi now for Nicky Dangles. He'll dump it into that far side, but they missed time it. We'll have an offside call here. Yeah, not so often you see uh, Atreids mistiming things at the line, especially on uh, dump and chases, which they've been sort of integrating uh, a bit more into their game as a lot of these teams in the Euro scene have done. Just uh, so often Atreids don't need to uh, bring it out as well. So again, credit where credit's due. Goon's doing a good job at the line. As the puck down low here one more time. Lightning bumped off of it now. And apologies for any potential disruption there. All right, and we are back to a quality standard there. Is a good stop by Finn Kona. Domi fires one just wide. Love that look there. And another shot. High and wide. Finally, Finn Kona is able to find it and make the cover. Yeah, mercifully getting a whistle right there as Atreds uh, just started peppering him with shooting opportunities. Domi letting the old cannon from back there just fire off indiscriminately right there. Had a couple good looks himself. This one sent around the back of the net. Benito can't work his way out of it. Good job by Viva. Here go Goons down the other way. Of course, they scored the opening goal of game number one. Getting to overtime and again falling a three to two. Here is Benito. It's King of Apes. Now Nikki Dangles. Pass in front. They score. What a way to get the opening goal of the game. Great passing display. Blinking, you'll miss it. Benito has the opening goal. Huge, huge play right there coming out from Atra. It's just kind of just a uh, net drive sort of play and a pass towards the middle, I believe, coming out from Nikki Dangles, as you pointed out. And that's just tremendous work from Atreds to get on that board early. That's a huge, uh, kind of huge detriment there to Goons. Again, when you have to play against this Atreds team from behind, they can just absolutely eat you alive. We'll see what the response coming out from Goons will be as they try a pass to the slot intercepted by Domi, as he's done so often this season. Nicky Dangles now. Bit of space. Benito between the legs. A follow-up pass. Back to the point here with King of Apes, and again down to the cap. One more time up to the point, D to D. Here's Domi. King of Apes, shot saved by Fincona. Juicy rebound. Benito tried to go over for Villapoika. Pass was off the mark. 
H. Reds draw the call. I'll send right as I was about to say, they're getting more comfortable in the attacking zone. There you go, they draw the penalty. Jay Toro going to the box. Yeah, maybe initially thought the guy was going to come a little bit closer to him. A sort of a poke from behind gets uh, caught in the feet, and he will be sitting. This is a huge, huge chance for H-Reds to double up their lead right now. Goons have to come out with a massive penalty kill right here. It's a shot on from Domi just to keep it in the attacking zone. See what Benito can do. Nicky Dangle stopped by Fincona. He's had to make some big saves already in this one. Pika Roger able to pick up that clearance attempt. Can't make the move. Into the middle. Maybe more so trying to draw the call. Villapoika has it here now. Back all the way to the point. Domi. Nicky Dangles has it knocked loose. Great step up by Domi to keep it alive. He has it on the half wall. Tried to go back to the point. That pass off the mark. Now 30 seconds to go on the man advantage. King of Apes. Great quick movement. Goes all the way over to Villapoika. Now Benito. Domi, King of Apes, blocked. Unable to be cleared, though. We are back to 5-on-5. Five five. King of Apes for Nikki Dangles. Wrap around, stopped by Fincona. Minute and a half to play here in this first period. Benito, able to lead the rush here now for H-Reds. Has options. Looks not to go back to the point. Wanted to cycle into the slot. Here's Domi. Final 10 seconds now. Pass in front. Bouncing around. Finn Kona. Great job to hold his ground and keep that one out. Absolutely huge coming out from Finn Kona there. Definitely a calm presence in net for Goons, which they really need. h -Red's really starting to pour on the pressure here, and you do not want another late goal for them doubling up their lead at the end of this period here. They win the faceoff. They'll just uh, go kill the rest of the time, and... You know, take their bruises in the locker room, try to regroup and find a way to get generate some momentum against Adres because there hasn't been a whole heck of a lot of it for them. Their plays are getting disrupted at the line. When they do get into the zone, it's getting, uh, you know, kind of broken up pretty quick after that. And Benito swimming in Fincona's crease there on that goal, uh, on that goal, Celia, uh, for the opening goal uh, of Adres. And yeah, I'm. It was a good kill. I mean, by goons, they, they really needed to kill that off. You, you kind of winced when that penalty was taken because it really looked like Atreus was going to be able to sort of compound that advantage. But, you know, six registered shots over three minutes time on attack. This is the kind of game that we expect to see from Atreus oh so often. And goons, you know, losing that first one in overtime, looking at the way this one's going so far, that ruin really kind of hurts here because they're going to be hard-pressed trying to get back into this one. Atreus seemed to be... Uh, have adjusted to the style that goons want to play and are able to throw their own back in their face. And, you know, one goal lead may not seem like uh, much, but when you're facing the, uh, well, one of the top uh, defensive teams, well, it can be uh, very tough. And second period underway, Elite Division playoffs. Again, sportsgamer.gg for all the information that you need, not only on the Elite Division, but everything going on in our other tiers, including... The Pro Division playoffs, which right now they are in their quarterfinal stage. Shout out to uh, Dynastia and No Rex Gaming, two lower division uh, or two lower seeds taking games off of the top two seeds heading into the playoffs. So again, that format also uh, experiencing some potential upsets, as you you know you love to see when you are uh, you know in a playoff situation here again you love the surprises instead of things playing out as you would expect although h reds very much wanting things to play out as you would expect again our defending champions they're up one nothing in the series and right back in to the attacking zone here benito shot on bouncing around all the Whoa. way over to the other side interesting moment there the lapoika tries the short side finn kona still flopping around nicky <laughs> dangles i thought would be able to get that wrap around. Chance yeah. down the other way now. Lose puck. Faze having to hold the line. Nearly swept in by Pika Roger. I don't know what's gotten into these goaltenders heading into the second period. Show me now for Nikki Dangles. See what he can do. Benito in front. Ill advised. Nearly own gold, but Fincona is able to make the cover. Great saves uh, by Fincona there. That was a bit crazy. And then Nicky Dangles, I think, instead of the normal wrap, tried to get that slap shot wrap that he loves so much. It must must be something that he's tested out and makes it a bit quicker than the normal wraps. Or maybe he already had that in mind. Didn't quite see uh, Fincona kind of flopping around there. Benito turns this one over to Viva. Does get it back. 
Atreds again trying to get right back into the attacking zone. Domi, loose puck, scores! Think it was an own goal, Sin, but Domi will get the credit, his second goal of the day. Yep, two to own, nothing now, Atreds. Own goal confirmed there as we do not have a replay. Um, so unfortunate for them, but exactly why you uh, drive and crash the net right there. Domi getting, uh, I guess we'll say, rewarded with uh, doing that here in Atred, starting to really compound the momentum now. They do ice it on that one. Unfortunately, it was a bit of a missed saucer pass, but man, when, they, when they've got into the zone right now, you're seeing just how good their cycle is. They're so content working that perimeter because then out of nowhere, they seem to be able to feed a pass through seemingly either an impossible angle or something that wasn't there just a second ago, but Moons with a chance now in the offensive zone to take it back to them and cut that deficit in half. And 11 minutes to play here in the second period. Still plenty of time, but you know Atred's going to look to pour it on. King of Apes, that pass. A little bit off the mark. Villapoika not able to hold on to it either. Benito draws the trip with exactly 10 minutes to play here in the second half. Way through it will be Aviba going to the box for that one and sent bad to worse for Goons. Yeah, just going to kind of make that point. It's not what you wanted to see at this stage. You're already down by two. It's starting to kind of get into desperation mode, as you can see, just by Goon's sort of, you know, behavior out there and the way they're playing. It's definitely feeling the heat right now from Atreds, and that's where they get you. They make you feel the heat, take you out of your comfort zone, and they just continue to capitalize on it. Good poke check here, though, by Piku Roger. Here comes the back pressure. <laughs> easy does it for Domi. It's amazing how easy he makes things look defensively. Benito, great movement there alongside Villapoika. Finds his way over to Domi one more time. Down low, knocked loose, recovered by Nikki Dangles, and again down for Villapoika. Below the goal line, here's Domi. Looking at his options, King of Apes was waiting. Benito, shot, save, rebound. Ben Cone is able to find it. 15 seconds to go on the man advantage. Yeah, it looked like Benito didn't quite get the one-time look he wanted, maybe being a slightly uh, off angle right there, so got a slower spinning shot. Still tested Finn Kona, however. Off the draw, Benito has it. Shot on, save, rebound, again covered. And we are back to five on five. Goons are running out of time. They, they, they've got to get this puck out of the zone. They, it would be huge to get a goal at the end of this period, but they just got to generate a bit of something right now. Atred's beginning to sort of run away with the momentum here, and that's not what you wanted to see, an errant pass between the defensemen of Goons, and right now just struggling to get it out of their own end. It is Benito who's able to recover it, and indeed the time on attack becoming very one-sided. Here again, circling back, looking for space. Nikki Dangles. Turns that one over, but gets it right back. And that's been the problem for Goons. You knock the possession free. Can't really do anything with it once you get it. Domi for King of Apes. Pass in front again off the mark. Another great interception there by Nikki Dangles. They're going to be right back in on the attack. Villa like a tremendous puck protection. Nikki Dangles for Domi. Shot on, stopped by Finn Kona. Down the other way here now for Goons. They only trail by two. One quick goal. Get some momentum back on their side. Benito. Yeah, just such a great job in puck protection by Atreds. Now it's Villapoika for Benito. Bit of space, loses that one. Finn Kona keeps it out. And it's Domi now stepping in. And for Benito, around the back, Villapoika wanted that quick wrap, hit the side of the goal. King of Apes shuts down Piku Roger, but he does turn it over to Viva. Space here now for Viva, stepping in off the skate of the forward. One more rush perhaps now for Atreds, but it is offside with seven seconds to go. Team sort of trading chances at the end there. I like the counterattacking from Goons. They're trying to just pounce on any little opening that Atreds gives, but the second they see that opening, it kind of gets closed off really quickly there. And Nice attempt at the sauce there, you know, towards the end of the period, trying to split the D. They might get one more shot on, but fortunately the buzzer will sound there, and Atreds taking that 2-0 lead into the dressing room. And at this point, it's just about you know, finishing this game off, closing it out. They have goons right where they want them, and if goons want a chance to sort of, you know, get back in this, they're going to have to open it up in that third period, which 
once again, will just play into HRED's hand. They have a strong counterattack. You can see already they're essentially, I mean, besides the face-off battle, which, again, surprising to see the face-off battle as it is with how... 14 to 1. Yeah, with how much possession that hreds have that just that just shows you how good they are off of every face-off situation how good their sticks are how good their bumps are blocking passing lanes everything works to getting the puck back into their own hands to dictate the game so it doesn't matter what situation they find themselves in they feel as if they're at an advantage because they play so well in all three ends i mean what are the odds that now 15 to 1 on draws, but you trail in time and attack by over five and a half minutes? It's bizarre. H Reds do take a penalty here, though. So, what an opportunity this is for Goons at the start of the third on this power play bid. Sin, I mean, you said they were kind of in, you know, really needing to score a territory before. You got to take advantage of yeah. that King of Apes penalty. Yeah, they've got two power play goals so far. They got to get another one. I know perhaps odds are against them, but you throw all that out the window here. This is a must-score situation for Goons. You find a way to get it done. You should win the faceoff. Off the draw, shot blocked. Rebound stopped by FaZe. Dangerous moment there, but again, FaZe all over it. I like it. Wasting no time as they did on that previous uh, power play where they got it. I think scored very quickly off of the draw here. And if Lightning can keep this up, they might get some momentum at least off this power play. That one unable to be cleared. Viva keeps it in. Over for Jay Toro. Poke loose. Mickey Dangles has it. Will take his time before clearing. I mean, almost found the quick of there too. Funny enough. Pika Roger offside, 104 remaining on the power play. Again, Goons looking for their first goal of this game after dropping the first game in overtime, 3-2. And they're in a really rough spot here in the third period, down by two against a team like H-Reds and Benito winning key draws there as Fincona plays that one rather precariously with the stick. What a poke check there by Benito. He has space down the other way. Backskate to maintain possession. Nicky Dangles there with them, all three forwards shorthanded. We're in the attacking zone. Only eight threats, man. <laughs> Only eight threats. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Here we go. We're back to five on five. Lighted and down low. Nowhere to go. Vitor, though, gets it. Good blocker stop by FaZe. Kirketsi now. Not able to find his intended target on that one. Puck back into the zone. Gotta love the idea of holding... Uh, holding R1 slash right bumper to uh, skate faster to the puck. King of Apes 2 for that loose puck that was below the goal line. Benito can't dump that one into the attacking zone, but situations like that, bouncing puck, nobody can get it. Benefits Hreds at this point. Every uh, second it ticks off the clock. Going to be frustrating for Goons. It's Benito. Not able to complete the move. Kriketsi has trouble with Villapoika. Good spin move. At least gets it to a teammate. Kirkatsi still fighting for this one. A mad scramble for the puck that Goons simply can't come up with. Benito for Nicky Dangles. He has space back for King of Apes. Goes right back to Nicky. See what he can do. Benito now down low. Viva gets it. 11 minutes to play here in regulation. And again, Goons just nowhere to go on these breakouts. Villapoika somehow gets that puck. Sends it around the back for Benito. Now King of Apes. D to D to Domi. Villapoika again for Nikki Dangles. For Villapoika, save, rebound. Benito trying to sweep it home. Couldn't get a solid piece of it. And Bencona is able to cover. That perimeter play was marvelous from h -Reds. Every pass just so quick and crisp. And then you almost feel like, oh, they're going to wear it. You know, they kind of lulled, lulled me, at least, into a false sense of security. Oh, they're looking to wear some time down. Boom. Pass to the middle. Shot on Benito right there for the rebound. It just kind of bounced into his skate, so we couldn't get the shot away. And you can see Atreds always with their foot on the gas pedal. Puck sent all the way down. Foot race for it. Pika Roger won't win it. 9-0-1 to go for Goons here again. Game number two, the one to nothing lead for Hreds, our defending champions from ECL 12. It's again, our winter season. ECL 22, the new split season format, leading to a grand champion. And of course, Hreds right now, uh, very much favored to be our first grand champion 
of this new format. Uh, favored as much as anybody. Shea Tora. As did here, D to D. Viva shot to flex wide. And what a chop there by Nikki Dangles. Heads up play. Forces Goons to reset. Yeah, and right now you can see that Atred's presence at the line. Five men lined up. There's just no space for Goons. Villapoika has that one knocked loose. Domi able to step in and still be able to keep up the fight for it. Jay Toro now takes the hit but does make the play. Space perhaps couldn't get the pass through. Benito now taking this one away. Four and a half minutes to play. Goons need two goals. Likely as it may be, crazier things have happened. Here's Benito. It drops back to the neutral zone. Right back to Benito. Big spin pass. Couldn't get it all the way around. Now Viva for Lightning. A little bit of space. Trouble. Nearly own goal by King of Apes. What an outlet pass, though, from Domi. Finds Villa Poica. Villa Poica for Nikki Dangles. Loose puck still bouncing around. Jay Toro to the rescue. That was Viva. Final minute and a half. Viva throws one on. Save. Rebound. Scores. Don't go anywhere quite yet. Lightning gets Goons on the board. 119 to go in regulation. Huge goal, and Goons do what they do best against these top teams. They stick around. They're always right there, ready. And that time, Lightning pounces on that loose puck there. What a net drive coming out from Viva. Reading the play, the space on that right-hand side of the ice. And he just tries to kind of shoot it towards that short side, force his face to make a play on that short side, have to make the save, and then... The puck kind of bounced around. I think it was kicked back up top, and Lightning just kind of got his stick on it. This is the shot. The little backhand from Beaver right there. You know, doesn't necessarily have to go into the net. And I can't tell if he passed that or if that was just a puck pickup that went awry. Either way, it was Lightning who got the puck after that and put that one home on phase. And with a minute 19 remaining, anything can happen. If Goons can get one more rush like that, we could very well see another overtime. See what happens, Goons trying to get things going right back in on the attack. Here is Pika Roger for Viva. Trip is called. Power play for Goons. 54.8 on the clock. This is massive. Again, must score for sure now, but they have an extended power play in the last minute of real time. 54.8 seconds now, as that will be Villapoika sitting in the box. This is the chance that Goons need to tie this game up. Dominated the faceoffs, and there we go. There's another one. Puck to the point. Jay Toro for Kerketsi. Jay Toro again. Viva. Pika Roger in front. Shot save. Rebound stopped again by FaZe. Here is Kerketsi. 40 seconds to go. Drives the net save. Rebound scores! Pika Roger ties it with under 40 seconds to go. Goons have evened it up. Unbelievable. Call this team the Cardi at Kids, making the heart stop and winning the hearts of all the fans in the ECL with that comeback down by two. They make their way back and tie it on the power play with less than a minute remaining. We might be headed for overtime, but you know, Atreds is going to have a pushback. Goons cannot even take a breath right now. They've got to be ready for this response. They looked dead in the water just a few moments ago. Instead, here we are. Tied at two, 30 seconds to play in regulation. Domi, not able to find Nikki Dangles on side. Absolutely incredible. This is what Goons is capable of. We knew, Sin, that they had the possibility. Atreds left the door open, and here we are. It's a draw. Benito not able to hold it. Villapoika gives chase, handled well. Jay Toro for Lighten, and now to Piku Roger. Domi. Big stretch pass. One back. Here is Benito now. Ten seconds to go. He sends it around. Kriketsi gets the outlet to Lightenin. His pass a little bit off the mark. Overtime for the second game. And as many attempts as on the agenda. Two all going into the extra time. I just want to give a little shout out to the play by Kriketsi right there that may have been overlooked from behind his own net. He does, instead of trying to kill it behind his own net, he realizes where the four checkers are coming from, does a quick no-look pass, and insane. Sent it right to the defenseman to break that out, who almost hit Piku Roger, 
on the stretch pass, he would have been in a one on one opportunity right here. Goons are playing in another stratosphere to where we've seen them all season. And this is what the good teams do is they crank it up a notch. You kind of feel a bit robbed that goons have to go up against H Reds because of how good they are. But at the same time, look what they're doing in this matchup. A second overtime will have to be played. Oh, just one goal. One goal and they tie this series up. One chance that goes in. Goons have tied this series up. Unreal. Just when you think it might be done, a team like Goons able to battle back and force this overtime. Again, the second overtime already between these two teams. And we will see what happens here. Looking again, sudden death overtime. Next goal wins. And we shall see exactly how this one plays out now. Where again, it is a 1-0 H-Reds lead. We said, of course, the regular season matchup was close. A 3-0 victory, but also an overtime in there. And Sin, this is now three out of the four games that they've played this season that have gone to overtime. And that just, again, speaks to just how much goons love these high-pressure situations, how much they thrive on competition, as really giving H-Reds a run for their money as H-Reds trying to get in there. Look how much both these teams want it. You can just see it in their uh, body language on the ice there. It's really, uh, really going for broke here. Yeah, they pass off the mark. Goons giving them a little bit more trouble here in terms of Atrex trying to gain the attacking zone. Domi just being hounded for the puck. Had to send it over to King of Apes. Now back to Domi. Villapoika for Nikki Daniels. Great move at the spin on net. Penalty called. Atreds to the power play. It'll be another charging call. This time, though, against Kriketsi. Yeah, again, the physical style has come back to haunt Goons a couple times here, and none bigger than this opportunity here in overtime. Atreds with a massive chance to take to, to score here and take a 2-0 series lead. Off the draw, Atreds on a rare occasion in possession of it. Based off of this game, D-to-D, -D, one timer blocked. Off the corner glass, still in play. Little Poika. For Nikki Dangles. Let's see what he can do. Now it's Benito. A couple of options. Goes to Domi. Gets it back. Fired one wide. Just a bit outside. Once again, back to Domi here. Shot scores! King of Apes wins it in overtime. Atreds a 2 to nothing series lead. Heartbreak for Goons. Just heartbreaking for Goons, but that's what happens. I mean, it's... Unfortunate for them, sometimes, you know, the, the physicality can come back to bite you. Taking those penalties at key times will make, you know, it can make you pay for it. And that's exactly what H-Reds did. Do Goons did it initially by getting that tying goal, but then taking that penalty at that stage in overtime there did indeed spell their doom. And the great play, what a shot from King of Apes back on the point. And it's sort of like... It's just sort of like watching watching a movie almost. You, you kind of feel like something's coming. They're, they're waiting for something. They're setting it up, and then all of a sudden, a massive shot comes. They did the same on that goal from Domi earlier. The same on a couple chances. h so, so good at kind of just, you know, lulling you into a, almost a trance with the way they pass and move the puck. It seems almost casual until they're ready to strike. And they do just that. King of Apes, a massive two-point performance. And the game-winning goal there in overtime. Atreds take the series lead 2-0. Back-to-back overtime losses for Goons on the same scoreline, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least it was a might have been a 2-1 in, in the first game. But Sin, regardless, just... It, yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was 3-2 as well. But just the idea of how close Goons were one goal away on each occasion... But it just goes to show how difficult it can be. Yeah. Again, close is one thing. And uh, unfortunately, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And H-Reds, they're the ones to get it done. They've done this so often. You think back to last season against Fralunda, where three of the four games they won were one goal contest. That's what separates the good teams 
from the greats is that the greats will find a way no matter what. They gave away the lead. Didn't matter. They didn't let it affect them. They said, okay, over time. Oh, they're going to give us a power play. Let's do our thing, boys. And they did exactly that. We get a nice uh, look at that uh, that goon's goal. <laughs> He's giving himself a little bit of a hard time right there for uh, getting hung up on his own goaltender and uh, not defending as he should. You love the sense of humor coming out from the uh, the game winner, King of Apes. I'm sure sure he's feeling okay about it after uh, that howitzer from the point goes in. He made up for it, certainly. Look at that shot off the post and in picture. Perfect. And then it's one of those things that they tease all game long with Domi. And there's so many times it's like, why didn't they go D to D? And it's that hesitation and that patience to say, oh, don't worry. When we go, to, when we go for that D to D one time or we're going to make it work. Case in point, they do there. It's the winner. And it is a 2-0 series lead in this best of seven for our defending champions in H Red Sin. What a way to round out the action here on day mm -hmm. one of the postseason. I mean, what a way to start the playoffs. The insanely close matchups. I really thought we might see the split here once Goons took it to that second overtime. The way they came back in that first one there, very much a feed-on-momentum type team. But H Red's one of those teams who's just so good at taking it away from you at a moment's notice. Absolutely. So again, a reminder, more playoff action tomorrow. Of course, same time uh, that you can catch it right here, of course, here on Sports Gamers. Again, our other two playoff matchups. It is Habu Gaming and Frolunda El Clasico, of course. It used to be a perennial finals matchup. We'll see it in round number one. IQ will be taking on a fairy stat in the battle of four versus five. Of course, King Lime and B Major on the call in that one. Again, 1945 CET. It's about 1.45 p.m. Eastern for those of you on the North American side of things. So make sure to catch that. Sin and I will be back this Wednesday as well to continue the coverage of this opening round. So make sure, of course, to follow along again, sportsgamer.gg as well. As again, there you get a look. We saw today H Reds and Granite both taking two to nothing series leads in their playoff matchups again sim we could sit here and dissect the action all day long but ultimately we got to let the people go people got things to do i certainly do uh, at the very least though you can again catch sin on the youtube side of things at sim for the win productions i am everywhere at tukey 24 a, a big thank you to those behind the scenes that help make this possible and again for our sponsors Wilhelm, come on Lockerty, and st hockey we will see you all tomorrow again for more elite division playoff action have a good rest of your day and or evening for those of you that are more local, get some sleep for the players. Take a shower. Those are some sweaty games. <laughs> we will see you all tomorrow. Again, thank you very much for watching.